Before you jump into the video, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. Wow, guys. Holy crap. Now, I don't usually do movie reviews, but I thought in this case I would because... This was just such a fun experience seeing this movie, and it's doing so incredibly well at the box office, and I can see why, and let me just say before I start that I, you know, all these superhero movies coming out, I see them every single year uh, from both Marvel and DC, and... I, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. I just, I feel in, in, on on the one hand, the market is just completely, you know, when you think of movies, you know, just the market is getting completely oversaturated with these films. I mean, Black Panther and now Infinity War just, you know, destroying the box office. I mean, I, I, I doubt that it's any of the Star Wars films will be able to hit close. I mean, you know, even though... Episode 8 hit high numbers, I really don't think, you know, especially with the reception of that movie, like, at least the reception behind Infinity War has been uh, mostly, mostly positive, and, uh, you know, it, it would be gripes about certain characters that are in this film that people wanted more time with or more explanations with that I can really see the only being the real reason why people wouldn't like this film, because... Uh, th you know, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of characters in this film, and it's funny because because before I heard what this was going to be, I was seeing the updates to this film saying that a whole bunch of characters were going to be in this, and I was thinking, how are they going to give even if the movie's you know two and a half, two and a, two only almost three hours long, how are they going to give ample time to? Um, all of these characters, and they they give more time than others. Uh, obviously, the one that Thanos has more time with, more more of a relationship with his daughter, of course. Uh, again, I don't want to give too many spoilers away about what happens in this movie, but I I feel like the second half will talk about spoilers because just so much about what I liked about this film was the execution towards the end especially and just all throughout from beginning to end so it's kind of hard for me not to talk about it i will put a spoiler warning in the description but uh anyone close to thanos of course anyone affected by thanos like thor and loki at the beginning and it's funny because i had seen thor ragnarok and the teaser at the end was that thanos's ship comes and comes up and i'm thinking like like these guys like thanos just escaped his home and his sister destroys the place they they well they have to destroy the place to stop his sister and then they're escaping and then thanos comes and kills loki right at the beginning and thor was even doubtful in the movie if loki was either gonna was even gonna come back and then <clears throat> i forget the name of his friend it's the one that's played by carrie payton who plays ezekiel in the walking dead uh then he dies so they just they rip the ship apart, Thor's floating in space, the Guardians of the Galaxy crew come across, uh, Starkiller, um, and so, I just, you know, I just felt bad, I was like, oh my gosh, like, the, you know, they just, they, they, all these, all, everything they do in Thor Ragnarok to see the conclusion in, uh, Infinity War was just, it was just mind-blowing, and, there are many more mind-blowing things in this film, let me just tell you, in terms of characters that you may or may not like, or may have a, have a certain infinity to, if I'm going to use a cliche or make a pun, um, wow, I'm just, oh, I, I'm sorry, because I, I, when I'm making this review, I just came back from seeing the movie, and I'm trying to process in my head there were so many fight scenes in this film, and I loved the application of the Infinity Stones and the Infinity Gauntlet and the, the powers of the various stones. And surprisingly, they didn't need to spend too much film time going over every single stone because some of the stones had been discussed in previous films. 
Uh, Doctor Strange, of course, that whole all of his powers were rooted in the Time Stone. Uh, and then previous films, Guardian of the Galaxy, like all of the pre some of the previous films from Marvel had discussed and used these powers. The Power Stone, the Space Stone, like they had all used them. So this film was just taking all of the stones and all of the powers and smashing them into one uh, versatile tool, which was the Infinity Gauntlet. And it's, it's it, for me, I think it's cool because it's a very simple plot for people to understand. This giant hulking monster wants to assemble all the stones into this gauntlet so he can seemingly rule the universe and be a, a dictator, a tyrant, but... Interestingly, Thor is not, not sorry, not Thor. Thanos <laughs> is interestingly the main character of this film. Like I found myself wanting to jump to his perspective mostly because if you think like who is the main character of this film? Because they jump to so many different characters. Now, you could say potentially Iron Man because he's kind of the person that uh comes up with the plan to stop Thanos in a way. You you could also say Thor cuz Thor's the first person who feels Thanos's wrath and the whole film he's looking for vengeance, making a forging a new weapon for himself and uh, getting to use it by the very end which was cool. Um you could also say Gamora who is the the the, the green-skinned daughter who uh has a very complicated past with Thanos that comes into play in major ways in this film. Um so you could say, I guess you could say the three of them, Iron Man, Thor, and um, Gamora. And then, of course, Thanos is the overarching one. Like, Thanos trumps them all because you're really following his quest. Like, the whole film, from start to finish, you're following his quest for the Infinity Stones. Or the Infinity Gems, um, whatever. But, I like, I'm going through this film, and, you know, again, I'm glad I wasn't spoiled, but I'm thinking, like, will he get all of these gems by the end of this film? Because he has, what, two of them? Or he has one of them. He had the Power Stone, and we see him, like, the first scene of this film. Like, they, sh it's nice because there's a scene for almost every single gem, and he uses the Power Stone against the Hulk... And it's funny because the Hulk only has one scene in this film, and it's the in the very beginning, and Thanos shows that his power is beyond anything the Hulk can have, and it really makes you think, like, wow, like there is nothing that can defeat these stones. This is this is it. This is the the and whoever has this power is going to kick a major ass, and so really the only way to beat Thanos is to either destroy the gems, which comes into play with uh, Vision at one point in the film, and then also just to hide them and to use, you know harness their power and just try to make sure he doesn't get them. And that's really what they try to do. I mean, there's an entire, you know, with, with the Black Panther crew, there's an entire war, which is shown in a lot of trailers, of course, leading up to this. Like, there's an entire war that takes place just for the stone that's in Vision's skull. And... Many of, right now, in the ending, many of the characters are stranded there, Thor being one of them, um, after the events of the ending, which I'll get into, but there, like, every single event in this film is based around just them getting the stones, that's just the plot, but then we also find out many reasons as to why Thanos wants to harness these stones, like, he's not just destroying things like Galactus, like, it's not like Fantastic Four where... Uh, if you if anyone's seen Rise of the Silver Surfer or read the comics with Galactus, where it's just a world eater and it just eats worlds and consumes them, and the Silver Surfer is the envoy, the convoy for um for that destruction, Thanos is actually he believes in the ultimate sacrifice for the ultimate victory. So when he's talking to Gamora about when you see the scene when there's a flashback when her people are being slaughtered. And he justifies it by saying, well, everyone was starving on that planet beforehand, but then after we came, we created a new civilization and everyone was kind of fed and uh, saved in a way. Almost, if you're talking Walking Dead, because The Walking Dead is what I mainly cover on my YouTube channel for people who don't stick around my channel. It's kind of like the saviors from The Walking Dead. Negan, his whole we save people 
by enslaving people and imposing our will and I, our ideologies over people. Because w- what we think and what we believe is the dominant belief, no matter what you think. Kind of what Thanos is doing. And it's interesting that he... There's there's one point in the film, again, I'm getting into spoilers talk, but when he goes for the soul gem, and it's this very, very creepy, it reminded me of Mount of, of Mordor, kind of Mount Doom, where they have to drop the ring in Lord of the Rings, it kind of, just that cloaked, floating, almost, it just, everything reeked of death in this place, and Thanos is going here, and he learns that the only way to get the soul gem is to sacrifice what he loves most, and Gamora kind of plays this bluff, like, wow, like you do, that, that's awesome that you're screwed because you don't love anything. You're just a power-hungry monster that wants all of these gems for yourself. And then you see him crying, and she's even like, oh, wow, those are pity tears for yourself. And it's, it's sad because he actually had a very close relationship and very close feelings and strong feelings for this for this girl that he considered a daughter it's not biologically his but she grew up with him and he has to kill her to get this stone and again it goes with his whole belief that the ultimate sacrifice will bring about the you know the ultimate good the greater good and I'm sitting here like that's it's so horrible seeing her fall to her death and die, but at the same time it goes along with his belief. And this is where we really feel that this is the this is the main character of the film. And that's why when I'm going through this film, I'm like, I just want to see this guy win. I just want to see him get all of these stones, and I want to see what his plan is. Because at this point, we don't have it, we haven't spent enough time with the other Avengers. To really want to feel that. Now, again, I know that all of these characters have been fleshed out in previous films. Uh, Black Panther, all the Iron Man films, Age of Ultron. I understand that there's many films that some of them I've seen, some of them I haven't. I'm going to say that. Like, some of the films I have seen. I actually watched Thor Ragnarok only one week before seeing uh, this film. So, it was interesting because this film starts... This film picks off right exactly where Thor Ragnarok leaves off, where they see Thanos' ship, and then Thanos boards their ship. So, um, in some ways, do you need to see all the previous films to see this film? I mean, no, you don't have to, because, again, Thanos is such a, a crucial part, and all you need to know is that he's just trying to get all the Infinity Stones, because by the end, by the end, he... I, and again, I cannot believe they went in this direction, but he actually gets all of the infinity stones and he wins like the the bad guy i guess you could say quote unquote the bad guy of the film basically defeats the avengers and he actually kills off some major cast members and i know it's funny because i see a lot of people reacting um some of the sad deaths where spider-man uh is is dying like these people are just evaporating into nothing and Thanos foreshadows this by saying that he could snap his fingers and half of the universe would cease to exist once he has all of the stones. Sure enough, he does it. And another foreshadowed scene, he says that when he wins, he would just look at the sunset and revel in his victory and revel in the good work that he's going to do. And sure enough, that's one of the closing scenes of this film. Other than the intercut scenes of a lot of the main cast being devoured by just just the existence of the of the infinity gauntlet being complete and just Thanos's power just <laughs> and it's not exactly clear whether these characters are dead for sure or if maybe they're some people think that their souls are trapped inside the infinity gauntlet and once the gauntlet's destroyed or something they'll be revived or they'll come back but, I mean, major, major cast members are just, you know, right now I'm thinking Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Those were the two big ones. And then the, um, what was the, uh, 
It's actually Vin Diesel played him. I forget the I forget his name. He's from Guardian of the Galaxy. He was playing that video game the whole time. And then he helps put Thor's uh, axe together. Like the only thing he actually does. Like the whole film, I'm like, what the fuck? This the uh, every character in this film is contributing in some way and this guy's just playing this video game the whole fucking time and then he actually contributes so um yeah he he fades away i'm pretty sure black panther himself fades away um you know the black panther um just just gone like again unless they come back in the next film if the 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 gauntlet's destroyed or something happens or maybe he wants to bring them back to taunt them I, like dude like <laughs> like, wasn't there supposed to be a second Spider-Man Homecoming film? I thought that was going to be a sequel. And now, like, Spider-Man's gone, and so is Doctor Str- Like, some of these characters where you thought that they would have continuity in future films, like, they're just gone. Again, re- just reinforcing, just very gutsy, very gutsy calls to kill some of these people off. Now, I, I-, I do kind of have to wonder one thing. That we don't, will these characters come back? Because I just discussed it a little bit that the possibility that they could come back. Like, isn't there some way of reversing it? I guess there is some lore. Because again, another spoiler: at the end of the movie, we get a tease that somebody is there. There, there, there's the distress signal that's going out to this mysterious person and we see this symbol and it's captain marvel and that's something you kind of have to know the symbol and go into the lore for and i i've heard talks she has maybe a power that can reverse this it's 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 tough because one scene i'm thinking of in particular where dr strange gives thanos the time stone so that iron man's life is spared and then Thanos is like, no tricks. And then Doctor Strange gives Thanos the Time Stone. It works. Everything works. He has it. But at the same time, like, Doctor Strange kind of just accepted being taken away. Like, fading into oblivion after that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, was that a trick? Like, you know, remember the, the one in a million or one in 14 million chance of them winning when he was looking into the future? What would that entail would captain marvel have some sort of power that allows her to undo everything like for me it would just it would feel like a cop out honestly if that were the case because then it would just nullify everything from the first film it's like oh you know we made you think that thanos could destroy everybody and now you know everything's going to be reversed and he's going to be defeated and now we have all of our actors back for all of our sequels right because I'm pretty sure, isn't there a second Spider-Man Homecoming coming out? Like, isn't there another Guardians of the Galaxy coming out? Like, some of these movies have kind of already been confirmed. So how do you justify their, this existence? Like, unless those movies took place before the events of Infinity War, and we're just saying that that took I mean, but then again, why would you watch them after the Infinity War knowing that they died? Like... I don't know how you'd pull that off because, you know, Tom Holland just had an incredible big performance in Spider-Man Homecoming just last year. And now you're going to kill him off a year later in Infinity War. Like the only thing in my mind is, well, oh, no, he didn't die. Like now this Captain Marvel is going to fucking use the power of feminism to, <laughs> to to save the day. Sorry, that was that was out of left field. Sorry, I didn't I didn't mean to say that. But no, it's just, you know, it, for me, it's just annoying because I almost feel like they are going to reverse it. Like in the back of my head, it's like, oh, that that's what's going to happen because this film in my mind was badass that they kind of had that gutsy call to kill off major players in the Marvel Universe. But the more characters they killed off, I was thinking, like, okay, at some point, like, if everyone died, then of course it was going to be reversed. Not everyone did die. Some characters, some characters faded away, some didn't. But, again, this, this, I I could speculate this, about this forever, but I think I just wanted to give a quick review here. Um, I, I loved it. They just, they did so so many bold things i loved the powers every single stone got justice with its powers and for me 
as a writer, being very influenced by the Infinity Gauntlet and some of the lore that's come out of it, from it, and then other other mediums, other television shows, other movies that have kind of made spinoffs from it and taken ideas from it, I was just very interested to see how a film cinematic version was going to handle the powers of the stones and the action, like, it it delivered, man. Like, seeing the fight scenes with Thanos fighting all of the all of the Marvel heroes, uh, it was just, it was, inc- it was just incredible, it was just, like, that scene where he takes the moon and breaks it apart and uses it as a meteor shower, like, holy shit, just great cinematic, I mean, I know it was CGI up the asshole, but, like, <laughs> in green screens, but, like, I, I liked it, I liked it, uh, I, 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 again, I'm not a huge proponent of these superhero films because i think they're just oversaturating the market i mean at some point what in the next five years like at some point this whole conflict has to come to an end and some of these actors will probably say like look like you know we've stretched this out over five ten years but you know at what point do we just kind of you know put the cap on it is it going to be you know stan lee passing away is it going to be you know it's funny because some of these films might finally come to an end once Stan Lee passes away in a few years, to be honest. I mean, we're already kind of in endgame material. Like, once this conflict with Thanos is complete, like, what what can you do to top that? Like, I feel like the films were building towards this in the first place. Like, they were really building towards Thanos being, like, th- this being the conflict. Because all of the gems were in previous films. They built towards this. At the end of Age of Ultron, they teased Thanos' existence. So, this was really building up to it from the start. So, once Thanos is done, like, how I don't know how you can get any bigger than that. So, so yeah. Um, so, great film. Great film. Um, you know, almost a perfect 10, really. I You know, it was... I get a bit disjointed with just how many characters there were, but I think I feel like that's kind of inevi- an inevitable. So I, you know, near perfect for me, near perfect. But I do want to reserve a little bit of that until I see the second part because this really is kind of like a two part film, and I'm just gonna be kind of frustrated if this Captain Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel seemingly has powers that just defy everything like oh the infinity gauntlet's the most powerful thing to ever exist but then again captain marvel just you know fucking farts out some wind and just you know can defy everything and uh, i don't know it's it's gonna be frustrating because at this point like who can be thanos he has the gauntlet he has all the powers so i just we we saw everyone in this film in infinity war going up against Thanos, just powers and powers and powers, not being able to do it, not being able to destroy him, and I I don't know. I'll reserve my judgment when I review part two, but so far part one was incredible. So, So there you have it. Great film. I don't usually review films that often, but I think just cinematically, story wise, and everything, I was just blown away. Loved Thanos' character, loved everything about it, and um yeah, that's just kind of what I uh, wanted to <laughs> wanted to tell you guys. So uh, first impressions again. I just got back from the theater, so uh, uh, this was great. This was awesome. So credible, good job, Marvel. You know, I know you're making a bazillion dollars, probably rolling around that freaking money right now. So I contributed towards it. So good. You know, this was this was pretty original. You know, you took the source material, messed with it, and you know. St- you know, Marvel and DC, I mean, they're just, they're, they're cash cows, they're, I don't know how long they can bleed these things, but they're just, they're just cash cows, like, I, I hate to shrug my shoulders at this trend, but it's just, it's become just a thing, so, uh, and they're, 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 they're quality, they're quality things, they're funny, they're well put together, they're cinematic spectacles, that just everything kind of just comes together, so I, I can't be mad. I, I can't be mad. You know, of course, I'm a little jealous, of course. But at the same time, this is it's it's having its time. It's having its time. So the superheroes are kind of here to stay. So uh, with that said, I will sign off. Thank you, guys. And um, stay tuned for different reviews for me in the future. Thanks.